Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And this is going to be hopefully the first of a series of tutorials that will look in detail at the numbers behind blend modes. Now, there are plenty of tutorials out there about blend modes, but mostly they'd simply show you what blend modes do. But what I'm aiming to show you here is why they do what they do. And once you understand that, I hope you'll be able to use them far more intelligently and less randomly. So let's make a start by looking at two basic blend modes, Lighten and Darken. So the first thing to know about Lighten and Darken is that they are friendly names, or rather they're supposed to be friendly names, that disguise the scary maths of what's actually happening. In professional compositing applications, you won't find lighten and darken so much as maximum and minimum. And what maximum and minimum do is maximum returns the maximum of the two layers, the foreground and the background, uh, for each pixel in each channel. And minimum is the min function, and that returns the, the minimum of the each pixel in each channel. So another way of putting that is this. So max means return the brighter pixel, min means return the darker pixel. So just to explain those two functions, if I have two variables, 0.4 and 0.6, and I use the maximum function on them, I will get 0.6, which is the larger of the two input variables. And if I use the minimum function, I will get 0.4, which is the smaller of the two input variables. Now, unlike most blend modes, the lighten and darken don't actually combine the pixels. They just decide which of the two values you're actually going to see. So there's no combine operation involved. And a corollary of that is that the order of the layers doesn't actually make a difference. The only, the only operative thing is that you put the, the blend mode on the top of the top layer, but otherwise you can have the layers in either order and the result will be the same. And just to reiterate the point that all blend modes evaluate each pixel of each channel independently. So that's probably all a bit obscure, but let's just dive in and have a look at what this all means in practice. So here I've set up a gradient that's got five steps, black at the left, white at the right, 50% in the middle, 25% here, 75% here. And I've also got a black solid over the top of it. So turn that on, you see that's a black solid. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set the blend mode to lighten, which we're going to look at first of all. And you see that with lighten, nothing happens. And that's because the black is darker than everything else. So there's nothing for it to do. So a black pixel is zero, and everything that's not black obviously has a higher value than zero, and that's why we'll see everything else. But if I come in and I adjust the value of the black solid, so we move up to 25% grey, you'll see that these two squares have both turned 25% grey. So we've asked the blend mode to choose which of the pixels has the higher value. And obviously 25% grey has a higher value than zero black. So that's why we're seeing 25% grey instead of black. So if we keep, keep going up, that's now brought these three blocks up to 50%. And then if we step up one more time, you'll see that four of them are turned to, to the foreground colour because that's brighter than all of those. And obviously if we go to white, everything will turn white because white is brighter than all the other colours. So that is lighten. And if we swap it around and we use darken, so bearing in mind we've got black at the moment, obviously black is going to make everything black because black is darker than any of the other colours. But as I move on upwards, you'll see that the other squares start to take on the, the colour of my colour solid. And when we get all the way up to white, we're not darkening anything. Basically what it's doing is evaluating every pixel and deciding which is the brighter of the two colours, whether it's this colour solid or the gradient. Now I did mention that the order of the layers doesn't make a difference, so let's have a look at that in practice. So I'm going to set the 
blend mode of this color solid back to normal. And I'm going to move the gradient above it and I'm going to set that to lighten. And then I'm going to come back down to my color solid and I'm going to adjust the color. And you can see that although the, this layer is below and it's not got the blend mode on it, it's still adjusting this, still affects which pixel gets chosen exactly the same way as when, when it was sitting on top. So now let's look at this with a real world image, this very colorful uh, Japanese street scene. So I've got that on the bottom here and I've got my color solid above it and I've set the blend mode to darken and let's turn that on. A moment where the color solid is black, so everything is black. So what I'm gonna do here to make this a little bit more interesting to look at is I'm going to use the green. So I'm just gonna make this green. I'm not going to use any of the other colors. So wherever this color solid is brighter than the other image, we're getting this green color. And as we go on up, you see how that works. Everything is green and everything else is effectively black or rather it's a greeny black. So why is it a greeny black? Why have we got no other color in this? Well, remember that I said all the blend modes evaluate each pixel of each channel independently. So let's consider what's happening here. The red and the blue channel have a value of zero. And so therefore, in the red and blue channels, the value is always going to be zero. In fact, if you switch over to the red channel, you can see what I mean. There is nothing in the red channel. Similarly, if I switch over to the blue channel, there's nothing in the blue channel because this blue value of the color solid is zero. And that's the lowest value for those pixels. When you compare the pixels of those two layers, whereas the green channel looks like this, and then if we look at the RGB together, you'll see that the green of my color solid is supplanting the, the green channel of the image. So that is what happens when we use darken. And effectively we get this monochrome image and it's actually really rather, rather nice. And I just want to point out that of course, if you wanted to use this as a kind of effect, you could just dial down the value of this using its opacity and you, you get back to your original image, but you get kind of get this green cast or, or again, whichever cast you put into this color solid. So that's a quite useful real world application of this. So let's switch this instead to lighten. And you'll see that with my green set at maximum, it's only the very white areas of the image that actually show through. So as we come down in level, Unlike Darken, we're actually getting color here. And again, the maths explains that. We're asking each individual channel to return the highest numerical value. And of course, what that means is that in the midtones, the color starts to coming through. So finally, let me just point out a, a real world application of this. I've got a blue color solid in the background here, and I'm going to add in a lens flare. And by default, the, the blend mode is set to add. I'm just going to increase the size of that. Let's go for 500 so we can see this. The blend mode there is add, which is obviously combining the pixels. And we'll discuss that in, a, in another tutorial. But if we switch the blend mode to lighten, you can see that something interesting has happened. Because we're selecting the brightest pixels, we're actually getting a lot more color here. We couldn't really see that out of color when we were in the add blend mode. But in the lighten blend mode, as long as it's brighter than the background blue pixels, and if we can bring this down, you can see it even more clearly that we're actually getting a lot more of the color of this lens flare because we can actually keep whatever is brightest and it's not being diluted by the background color as it would be with uh, many other blend modes. So as you see, to kind of knowing about the maths of this helps you to understand which blend mode to go with in a case like this. So hopefully that's a nice simple introduction to blend modes, lighten and darken are probably the easiest to understand. And hopefully in future tutorials, we can look at some of the, the others and, and get to grips with their numbers as well. So thanks very much indeed for watching. Hope to see you again soon.